Empty me of me and fill me up with you. Make so that I may become useful. Empty me of me, fill me up with you. Make of me your instruments. Empty me of me and fill me up with you so that I may become useful. Empty me of me and fill me up with you. Make of me your instrument. Make of me your instrument. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to do this. Thank you, Father, for your love and your compassion towards me. In spite of my daily darling. Jesus is all about you. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for your help always. Just come and help your girl again this time around. It's all for the glory of God. And may someone somewhere watch this and um, commit themselves, re-engage themselves in their service of God and of His people. Yes, Lord. May the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing unto you, Father. Thank you so much for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, well, my special love and healing ministry tribe. I hope everyone is doing well, you know. Yeah, um, thank God. <laughs> Mine is keeping it real. So let me just own up. I had to do, um, I had to do this yesterday. Uh, there was just so much to do yesterday. And... Um, I dilly dallied and so I missed out on an opportunity to do it another way and so I have to sit down and do it live today um, um, yes uh, it's all about serving God and his people in all joy and faithfulness and things I wasn't going to be in joy yesterday uh, the Lord somehow did not let me do this uh, because I was really tired <clears throat> and um, yeah so whatever be the case let me not discourage someone it's a beautiful thing to serve the Lord um, he's not a slave master who will not um, want his servants to rest uh, and he's so full of compassion so um, even if you you know you sleep or you're a little stubborn and as long as you come and say father I'm sorry and all of that so this is an exhortation that I gave in church on Sunday, uh, my church, Eden Life and Love Ministry. I've been so blessed and um, this is the third time I'm giving an exhortation this year. And to be honest with you, there's been so much growth. Oh my God. <clears throat> the first time was on the 21st of January this year. I had just turned 45. The second time was on the 1st of September, just like a few weeks ago. And then the third time was on the 22nd of September and each time like 13 minutes, 27 minutes, and then 40 minutes. My goodness, Father God, you really said this year was a year of acceleration. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. I hope that everyone is doing well and that all workers and servants of God are really going to be um, encouraged by this. And even those who are still thinking about it, who are on the sideline, do I want to serve the Lord? Do I want to be a worker in church? And, and all of those, you know, we all have to. Uh, uh, so, um, May my own journey be an inspiration to someone, motivate someone, encourage someone. And above all, you know, Jesus, our mother, right? Amen. So I started by um, talking about my personal instruction for this year, which is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Well, it's 2 to 5, but I just stopped on verse 2. It's good when as a worker and a servant of God, you can have this relationship with the holy spirit with the lord to the point where he gives you you know these instructions he gives you the team he gives you all of that you know so that as you are starting out you kind of have an idea 
what is expected of you what you can do what you should do and all of that so verse 2 says preach the word insist on every occasion favorable or not review um exhort with all gentleness and instruction so i had no choice as i said in church um my pastor told me the night before at about 11 pm that i was to give this exhortation i just said holy spirit help your girl he had even been telling me during the day that something big was coming and he gave me a song and i was like what's that something big just a testimony that i'm going to share in church no this was a thing that was coming and had i been sleeping at that hour i would not have seen that was a message so i praise the lord for that when they say watch and pray it's no joke uh workers in my church we pray from midnight to 1 30 in preparation of the service and i really like to attend all the time each time i can i do i want to join whether i'm leading prayers or not so it is in, the, in anticipation of that prayer at midnight that when i woke up at about 10 30 p.m i was like no just be praying and praying and praying and then somehow i i looked at my words up so i saw that so the main passage i had for this um exhortation thank you holy spirit i had used it for the previous exhortation on why you do the things to do or why do you do the things to do and for whom do you do them this time around i still use some of it you know to encourage workers taking from colossians chapter 3 verse 22 to 23 servants in all things obey your masters according to the flesh not only in their sight as people pleasers but in singleness of heart with the fear of the lord verse 23 says whatever you do do it heartily as for the lord and not for men oh my god i really love that passage i mean like as much as you are obeying your masters let it not be because you want to please them no you are obeying them because of the spiritual authority that the lord put over you yet the person you are doing this for you are serving is the lord right yes so it's not because they are watching over you no even when they're not watching over you serve them sincerely yeah because of your reverent fear of the lord and then um walk willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the lord rather than for people amen so once i had laid that foundation i my work was divided into two parts serving the lord the gift of serving god he told me the holy spirit revealed it to me that let's learning a lot of things about spiritual gifts and all of that and i actually realized that saving service and help is a gift and it's true not everybody has that gift so if the lord gives you that gift use it oh my god yeah the gift of serving god jesus is our model jesus our model jesus robbed himself of everything he left everything and he came down in obedience to the will of his father john 4 34 tells us that jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to accomplish his work so jesus didn't have any plan b plan c no his plan a and his plan everything was to do the will of his father because it's his father who sent him we walk as a call to that although sometimes you're yeah, like no nah, this is too much that i've seen before god no i cannot go there papa no that is too much oh lord la 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 <laughs> what help us holy spirit john 6 38 says for i came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me so jesus is telling us that that is why he came down and that he's not bothered about food when talk of meat right he's more interested in accomplishing the work of the one who sent him now the gift of serving god's people that's colossians 3 22 because the gift of serving god is colossians 3 23 you are doing this you are doing your you're serving the, this you are serving people under a banner right be it of your ministry of your association of your church you know of the holy spirit's guidance you are serving under that and so you have to try to do your best not only when you are being watched 
but you have to do this in all sincerity and in reverence of the lord oh my god you know the lord is watching us where can we hide from his presence now and he knows everything so we really just have to do this thinking about him yeah oh my god so we stay with jesus right let's stay with jesus our model uh jesus tells us in john chapter 13 verse 3 to 7 you know the whole passage about him washing the feet of his disciples okay let's just do a quick reading sometimes some people listening to the word of god when you read it because for them to go and open their bible is something else haha <laughs> Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. Someday we all will understand what Jesus is doing. So even you, worker, you might not understand all what you are required to do, like if you are working in church, why they are giving you all of those assignments, or, you know, or why the Holy Spirit is leading you in a particular direction, and um, even why your own ministry is opening up the way it's opening up when you did not want it to open up that way i confess or you know and this and that and no and why do yes you don't need you will not even understand everything you know me for example i just obey because my own scripture that the lord gave to me in february of 2015 before i came back to this country was proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and you make your path straight to the point where i go before i even understand what that assignment was all about seriously I, i'm just learning that i am a gatekeeper and i've already been doing some things in that area but i didn't know that that meant that was what gatekeeping was all about amen so workers maybe you just want to really think about it and be like i don't need to understand it all i just need to um do it the way the lord wants me to do we also look at John, uh, that same chapter, from verse 12 to um, 17. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow do as i have done i tell you the truth servants are not greater than their master nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message now that you know these things god will bless you for doing them so it's not just about knowing those things it's about doing them it's about serving it's about um taking that example of jesus right oh my god father thank you so much just continue to help me you know because as much as we we preach and all of that we are preaching to our own selves and we learn and we grow as we as we minister as we share as we encourage yeah thank you so much father self with joy and compassion this was another big part of my exhortation because god loves a cheerful giver you don't give only of your money you give of your time you give of your talents you give all of that and so if you are not cheerful in in the giving then he's not loving you he will not even get it so there's no point matthew chapter 9 verse 36 it has the some examples of compassion how jesus was full of compassion and that is to encourage us workers to be full of compassion also in matthew chapter 9 verse 36 we read when he saw the crowd he had compassion on them because they were languishing and defeated like sheep without a shepherd ah. and i was just sharing how i really have a shepherd and i'm so grateful to the lord for this shepherd who is after his own heart my pastor my god i'm blessed and and because i've been elsewhere i know how blessed i am what a privilege it is to have such a shepherd 
who cares about you about your well-being not only about you about every other person everybody cannot have that same testimony about no you can be somewhere where you don't you, you can be there one year two years you don't you, you even good morning you have not said to the pastor the pastor doesn't know your name you, you don't even know the pastor's name unless they keep writing it somewhere you will not know you know not to talk of even having access to go and talk to them no i don't know that might be what happens in mega churches i was once in one of them not so mega yet it was that way you know actually <laughs> the fun is that i once met that the the was senior pastor in a, in a in an informal setting and they greeted me and then they blessed me <laughs> i don't think they know that i was ever in their church at some point um the better side you know that's life okay so matthew chapter 14 verse 14 says this when he came out of the boat he saw a great crowd and was moved with compassion for them and he healed the sick so um even when jesus was maybe on his way to something else or he was tired um, he was moved with compassion and he healed the sick and we know that even if he was just saying be healed be healed that still takes some energy sometimes as workers we might murmur we might say i'm tired why only me uh, i've already given enough uh i mean there was a time when i had some challenges and i prayed i said oh father what am i going to do now and then the idea came from a fellow worker who didn't even know but who just suggested to me you know you can split and and but that way before the time is up you would have and it, it worked and it helped me a lot and i was so grateful so this is also why we have to encourage each other in our saving our service you know our financial obligations our material every obligation is good you know we are doing this with joy and compassion and we are doing it as unto the lord not as unto men you see another example from jesus matthew chapter 15 verse 32 jesus called the disciples and said i have compassion on this crowd for they have been with me for three days and they have nothing to eat i don't want to send them away fasting let them lose their strength on the way oh my god jesus wasn't even thinking about himself or his disciples you know we could say okay jesus was a son of god so if he doesn't eat for three days no problem but you know the crowd and it was a huge crowd uh so so compassionate of our lord so we have to sometimes um sacrifice our own comfort our own um recently i wanted to get something for myself and um, a sister of mine told me that they were broke and i prayed and i said holy spirit what do i do and he said send it send that money to them don't you have what you wanted to buy i did i had one already so i sent it to them and, and i was happy you know so it's also very fulfilling to um serve out of compassion yeah and luke chapter 7 verse 13 tells us that when the lord saw her he had compassion for her and said to her weep not and um yeah we remember this lady uh, that they brought and then um the lord was like uh if i don't have compassion for this lady who else will wow so we have to also as workers and i and, and i call it a gift because for some it doesn't come naturally and even for us workers i think it grows but let me speak for myself i have been a certain kind of person from childhood yet from the time i started serving the lord and serving his people in all the capacities he makes me to do that my compassion increases and also because of my personal testimony like where he brought me from i'm like how can i dare no 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 show that same compassion to, to to the next person at least even pray for people and stuff like stuff like that and then serving all faithfulness yes faithfulness you have to be faithful if you're not faithful what's the point that means that you cannot be trusted and you have to be obedient to the holy spirit you have to serve in submission to um one spiritual authority yes serve in submission to your spiritual authority if you don't submit to your spiritual authority then you're in the really not even submitting to god to the holy spirit you're like no uh -uh, this is not my spiritual authority i don't need any spiritual authority i have direct access to god the veil has been torn la, 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 la. yet he is the one who gives us 
he gives us the we talk about the five point ministry some argue that it's four four uh, but he's the one who gives for a reason so we cannot ignore this authority and say huh and we need to be careful that's an example that's something i said in church not an example but something i said that oh your spiritual authority they have some power over you they can curse you they can you know they can hold you back they can do some kind of things we see it even in the bible elisha was one who had such a temperament like the least thing i mean he's seven girls in and he got it hot some little children who were like making mockery of making fun of him and all of those things so i mean some some uh, men of god have given their testimony how when their spiritual father said whatever over their lives it, we know those things now we wrestle not against flesh and blood so they can out of anger say some words over your life just because you did not serve them with with obedience or respect you were not submitted what's the point We're going to say you're working with somebody and all of that and then you are not you are not submitting to them no and you have to serve out of love for god and in gratitude for his extraordinary love in john chapter 3 verse 16 why we were yet sinners he loved us he sent that sending is saving ah my god wow i mean i you serve in all humility and self-denial yeah, I gave some examples from my life of service. Uh, no, but I don't mind lying down on the floor. I don't mind dry cleaning and sweeping or doing all of that. I don't mind giving whatever the Lord asks me to give or whatever is required in church. I just pray for provision and I do that. And um, I don't mind being persecuted and humiliated and mocked. All of that because I'm serving the Lord and all of that. No so yep that is what humility means that is what self-denial means and um uh-huh obedience means that if i wanted to travel and uh, my pastor tells me that i have to do such a thing the next day i wouldn't go again the night before i would do it first and then i will go those are all examples that i shared in church on sunday so do not therefore serve god or his people if it is not with all your heart with love and with joy what's the point because if you think that god is saying he's not seeing it so don't waste your energy don't go and hurt people and don't even blame god when you don't hear uh, and what people will hear what some of us will hear when we make it to heaven yes don't even bother if you do i mean don't even believe that if you do all this there wouldn't be any persecutions there will be persecution where i'm proper what do you want to show are you the only one serving god are you the only christian you're overdoing this thing blah 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 ah, just continue if he's the one who sent you and where he sent you to that is where you go to and if he says do so so and so that is what you do don't go and be mommy sabitu serving all over the place jumping all over uh uh stay where the lord has assigned you and don't bother if people come and sambalat and whoever they come and they're trying to distract you focus on rebuilding the walls of the temple figuratively speaking amen so be encouraged dear walker by these words of the apostle paul in second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 i love it um jim elliot who was kidding he used to say that he's he's chasing a second degree in the university called aug of course they were not offering that but this is what he meant approve unto god do your best to present yourself to god as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly handling the word of truth yes no need to be ashamed if they may bring up your past so what i'm a new creature so no 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 i am now the good order of god i am not ashamed i will not be silent uh -uh. i will if the truth is that homosexuality is sinful it is sinful i am not going to say that i'm a progressive christian now just to please some people because maybe you know and stuff like that no even if i'm the one who is uh, 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 doing it or who is hiding and in being in the down low no ah god forbid i'm not even going to go down that kind of lane any lane anyway that is sinful that way 
I, uh, I don't have reproach in myself. I pray the Lord really, really helps me. And I know that he can, he does. Because since 2021, 20, November, that I made an abstinence with commitment vow, I haven't even broken it. The thoughts hardly even come to like, oh, I missed that life, nothing. And when they come, I say, Holy Spirit, help you again. Take it away. I rebuke it. So those are the kind of things we should do as workers. Before we even get to like, ah, it was a mistake. As the thoughts are even coming, rebuke those thoughts in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, because it's good to do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who has no need to be ashamed. Because if it's about your past, you can rightly say that, no, I'm a new creature. But if while you are serving, then things happen. You know, you people will now start using it against you and they will say, see, you say you are serving God, look at the kind of things that you are doing. So yes. May God bless us all. May he strengthen us, his servants, workers, so that one day when everything is over here below, we, his workers and servants, we hear the promise in Matthew 25, 23. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Yes, come to the joy of your master amen well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful with a few things i will put it oh my god and it was in the context of the parable of talents so yeah some of us might have five talents some have three some have two let's use them all the way the lord wants us to use them and um, force ourselves to be approved yes unto god so that we can hear this okay may the good lord bless us all may he keep us his workers may he strengthen us remember it doesn't matter if you were a first hour to be one let no one make you feel like no you're not qualified because you haven't been ordained because 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 no 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 we give god all the glory Oh my God, Holy Spirit, thank you. You always come true for me. I am so grateful. Okay, in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Amen. Now it's starting to rain again. <laughs>